Hi friends. It is a rainy Saturday right now. I have a cup of tea, Earl Grey, milk and sugar. And I thought we would take a look at my fountain pen collection. So this is its current status as of right now, early December, 2022. So the bells are ringing. They're excited about my collection. <clears throat> Most of my pins fit in this Galen Leather, Navy Blue, Crazy Horse, or whatever it's called. 40 pin case. I also have this pin case that my friend Phil gave me um, that holds some overflow and also my currently inked, though they're not in here for right now. And then this is the stuff that's on my desk. So. Let's start there. It's easiest. I have a black Varsity. I got this for free with a Black Friday order a couple weeks ago. It's nice having it on my desk as this like quick little pin. When it's done, I might get rid of it. I don't like the fuss of eyedroppering pins and I have enough other pins. So let me know what you think of that. Do you hate me for it? If so, I mean... You pay for posters, I could send it to you, but it'd be cheaper to just get a new one. My good friend Pete gave me this pen. It has my screen gaming name on it. Thronius Rex. This is a pretty nice pen, all things considered. Um, like, I didn't expect much from it, and it over-delivered. So it writes pretty nicely and pretty smoothly. I made the mistake of putting a super saturated ink in here the first time I used it. I won't make that mistake again, but I think it'll be good for sort of standard inks. And I like having this on my desk. It's just like this really pretty thing to look at. In here. So um, what I'm not considering as part of my collection are the pens that I know I want to remove from my collection. So there are pens that you'll see in an upcoming video about 10 pens or so that I would not repurchase. Um, some of those will be on that list. So we won't focus on those. They're back here. But here are these pens that I just, some of them I just pulled out of here because there was no space. So, um, and some of them, these were on my desk downstairs in my, my office, if you will. So I have another preppy in blue. And this has an infamously blue ink in it. And that's why I bought that pen and it's going to stay inked with that till I run out of it. This was a pen, the Ototaske, um, that we got from ink journal and I have actually used this uh, with the cartridge it came with I think no I put a Coeco midnight blue in it um but I've used this when I've gone on hikes and I thought I'm gonna keep track of which trails I go on so because this is so small um five inches I just, it's its really easy to take with me, and I don't care if I lose it. I mean, I wouldn't want to lose it, but I'm not going to be like, oh crap, I just lost one of my most precious pins. Okay, then we have this one, the Moon Man. I don't think this is the Q1, little fat man, or, well, there's another name how I found which model number it was to search for. I don't know what I feel about this pen. It's ridiculous. It holds way more ink than I ever want to write with. But it's delightful. <laughs> so for now it stays. <laughs> then we have this Jinhao Shark in Aqua. And I had bought, hey, it kind of matches my tea mug. Um, 
I had bought a pack of 12 of these and I gave away 10. And then when I, my friend Pete was like, well, I suppose I kind of forced a pin on him. I gave him the 11th and so I decided to keep this, the 12th. The barrel cracked because I over tightened it. So I super glued it and it works well enough to use. I don't love it. It's fine. It's acceptable, but it's super cute. Also, it was less than $2 a pen. It was, I think, like definitely over delivers for the price. And then here, oh, and it's worth saying, this is, they redesigned them. So they now come with like a hooded nib, a la like a Parker 51. And this is before they did that. Then these are from an, uh, these are uh, gifts from my boss. And so they hold a special place in my heart. This is a still form Cosmos. It's got a magnet that keeps it on. I replaced the nib, the titanium, and this collar thing is rusted. So I may reach out to them because that's like a real bummer. Um, it's fun to play with. And the color, I mean, we have to, of course, caveat, color is not accurate. Please, please don't base your purchasing decisions on the color that you see through this video because it's not accurate. Um, this is a, a pink, but like super light, almost champagne, but not quite. Then we have this one, which is made from a barrel, like a whiskey barrel. And it's got a blind cap for a converter back here that I never use. It also has a magnetic lid, which is super fun to play with. Uh-oh. Are you ink? <gasps> it's ink. Mm, I better clean this better. I just cleaned it, but I probably didn't clean around. Um, I probably didn't clean in the lid because it's metal and I was afraid. But we'll do that. So I usually f just do this and fill it like normal. Um, this is a fun pen to write with for its chunk. But like obviously, perhaps obviously, you can't really hold it by the section. Like that is non-existent. But if you hold it back here, it's chonky like that little fat man, the moon man. I'm going to leave that out so I clean it. Then, I will show this. I bought three of these pens and gave my boss the choice. He took the one that was all tumbled aluminum. I think I only gave him a choice between that and the black one because I was like, the blue is for me. So I have, these are Care Customs Fountain K. They're very solid pens. They look to be in really fantastic condition despite me having had them for years and years now. Um, I think I really would like to replace this nib and then I might reach for this pen more. Although, I have a really bad habit of, like, death grip on my pen. And sometimes I find that metal pens make that happen more. And then that also hurts me more. <laughs> it's already inky. Um, so I'm thinking of just letting this one go because the blue color is just gorgeous to me. But I do like these pens. They're really well made. I just... I feel like I graduated from them, if that makes sense. Although they're not like pins that you graduate from. I changed. It's not them. It's me. I've changed. So anyway, this is, these are going to be like overflow. So pins that I want to keep but haven't quite earned the spot of my more used pens. And that's gonna be a state of flux, I think, right? Like as our moods change, etc. Um, 
I keep pausing to take sips of tea, so apologies if that's really obvious. I feel like nobody wants to hear uh, sipping sounds. So, I was worried that I was like gonna regret this purchase, and I so didn't. I so love it, so I feel happy about that. Now, this is full, so that means I have to be done. Right? I'll be honest, I already have a pen in a cart. We'll talk it through. So, here's a hair. Um, this is my Banu Grand Scepter. Or, I don't know, 11 maybe? It has a medium nib. This writes really nicely. It's juicy, it's wonderful. Um, the ends glow in the dark. Obviously you're not posting this. Love it. I'm not reviewing any of these right now. If you would like a review of any of these pens, let me know and I will consider it. So this is the first thing that you see when you open this. And these are some of my most highly treasured pens. <laughs> and I don't know if you see a theme, but with two exceptions, three maybe, they're all some shade of blue or purple. <laughs> Je ne regret rien. <laughs> regret nothing. So, um... How do we want to do this? Take them all out. Let's take them all out. Let's give them their moment in this lack of sun. This is a Franklin Kristoff Model 45 in Salmon Glow with a broad um, sig nib. I need to use this more. So I kind of want this to be one of the next pins I ink up, but that is like a long queue. And I've realized I don't like having too many pins inked. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I saw Amanda's video with her, like, here's all of my inked pens. And I feel like I was getting vicarious anxiety. Um, <laughs> okay. There's black fuzz all over this desk because I just finished sewing a, a fuzzy black thing, uh, like cardigan. And right here is my Model 46 Franklin Kristoff in a blue diamond cast. This one I bought. Um, there's two here that will be like forever special because I bought them at the very first pin show I went to. So this year, the San Francisco pin show. This has a broad nib. Mm, aren't we all shocked? Well, if this is your first video, first of my videos that you're watching, you might be shocked. By the time of the end of this video, you'll be shocked that I have anything that's not broad. Um, okay. This pen, gosh, I love it so much. And I am so bummed that this maker is no longer making pens. So this is by Woodshed Pens. And the material is by Jonathan Brooks. Carolina Pen Company. It's called Mermaid Tears. It's so, it's such a good size for me. I feel like it's short and stocky, which described me well when I got the pen. I've been losing weight, so it describes me a little bit less well, but I'm still short. That didn't change <laughs> ever. Uh, anyway, this has a broad nib. It's wonderful. This pen, I think, was my first, like, independent pen, non-major reseller. So this is by Newton Pens. This is his model, Majestic, and the... I am torn about this pen. The material is called Orion and it speaks to me so much. It's beautiful. It's very, very dark 
and it's got dark purple and blue with sparklies in it. I don't, I doubt that's going to come across in the camera. Um, maybe. Although it's actually coming across brighter in the camera. Well, that helps you see it. But the model of it, I prefer flat top, flat top, flat top. Or maybe pointy, conical, but you can kind of see mostly flat top. And you can see that this is not that. So there's a part of me that wishes I could have gotten this in a different model. And perhaps I could. Like, I could order a custom pin from him, and then in four years, maybe I would get one. But... It is lovely, and the nib writes really well. I have a medium on this one because at that, when I bought this, I hadn't yet discovered I like it thick, so it's a medium. It's gorgeous, and it's nice to mix it up and not have all broads, she says. I'm convinced. Uh, this, this trio here are all by Woodshed Pins. This is his Katzberg model. I don't remember the name of this material. It's blue and purple and sparkly and swirly and lovely and has a broad nib. It's currently inked from 30 inks with that color. Some kind of blue. Maybe Cielo Cruel. Um, so wait. I'm going to take it out of here now so that I remember. Um, oh, this one is also inked with uh, potentially Cielo Cruel. So obviously I'm wrong about the color in one of these. Oh, that was Diamine Bashful Blueberry, I think. Then here is a Walltown Pens Lumley. And I have been eyeing this because one thing I really liked is that this clear section actually has sparkly glitter in it, holographic glitter as far as I can tell. So I found that amazing. And so I wanted, re I really wanted one of these models, especially after I saw a video, an old video of Amanda's where she got hers. And I was like, yeah, that's beautiful. So I got this one because this was available. And this has a broad nib and is also currently inked with uh, Deep Sea, I think, Robert Oster Deep Sea. This is all by memory. I could be wrong. I'm sure you'll correct me if you remember from my 30 inks videos. I also think maybe I'm making my friend Cal nervous by trying to put an ink on my hand on purpose. This is one of my most recent acquisitions. Oh! Amanda definitely made me do this. So this is a uh, Walltown Pins Watts. And the material is Peacock Plume, which changes color based on its... Um, orientation to the light so teal to purple to I'll be honest the purple almost is like magenta or red sometimes and I got this with friends are you shocked it's got a broad nib and I inked it up with Scribo Notorno Viola which was also an ink that I got because Amanda loved and I mean I thought I would like it too obviously so it's a really really dark uh, aubergine. Actually, I mean, this would be a great eyeshadow color for me, and I probably own eyeshadows in this color. Um, now we have my other San Francisco Pen Show pen, and this is a Jonathan Brooks Carolina Pen Company Charleston in the material Mermaid Tears. Yep, same material. I didn't know it until after I picked it, though they do look different. Like, so this one is um, more of a matte finish. Kind of like, you know, eggshell. And this is high gloss. And they look, they look different even without the finish being different. Um, I'm pretty sure I cleaned this one out. Yeah. So I got this in a broad nib. I really love it. There were a bunch that I was waffling between at his, but I kept coming back to this. I think the other one I really liked was maybe one of the Cenotes. It had um, some green in it. And I was just like, Maria, don't lie to yourself. You're not that person. Uh, this is, mm, mm, this pen smells like tires. Um, <laughs> this is a um, Ranga in collaboration with Peyton Street Pens. Miwak 2. I love 
so the significance of this is I live on uh, coastal Miwok land. And so I love that. The model that I most liked aesthetically was also named for one of the larger indigenous groups in California. So I really appreciated that. This pen is such a fantastic writer. It's super juicy. I'm pretty sure it has an ebonite fee, but who knows? It could be plastic. Well, it kind of looks plastic. Whatever. Um, it does post, not that I ever use that, you know, me. I put it on my pinky. Or I set it on the desk. Or I clutch it in my hand like it's going to escape. Um, it came, I got it with a medium nib. And I have since replaced it with a Goulet broad nib. Because it can, it, the feed can keep up. So I put a broad. I actually think I could probably put flex on here if I wanted to. This pen, oh, amore mio. This is my Santini Italia Libra in, I think the color is called Fifth Avenue. So kind of a Tiffany blue, but it's actually kind of more green. The camera makes it, the color in the camera is exactly color I would like. Perfect. This is greener than that. Um, but it's gorgeous. They make their own nibs. This is an 18 karat medium nib. And I actually would not want this nib broad. I could do a medium plus perhaps. But this is so juicy and lovely and wonderful. And oh, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I keep going back to their website like maybe I should get. And I'm like, no, Maria, you do not need another one of their pens. Um, so you can see these, these pins are inked. I have too many pins inked right now because it just finished their ink. Since we're here, we'll go over to here. I feel like this is visually distracting now. Here. There. Nothing there. Nothing more to see here. Move along. So I originally had this laid out with this grand scheme where I had all my German pens together and I felt very clever about that, but then I had to reorganize things and that didn't work and I'm really still kind of bummed. But originally this side here was like my less used pens, but that's no longer true because I pulled out a few of the ones that I really don't use often. Um, let's start in the back. Nobody puts baby in the corner. This is my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful oily, wet, hmm, um, vintage pin. It's a wall ever sharp. I think it's a Doric, maybe a Doric vest pin. I don't know. If you know, please let me know. Um, this writes so beautifully. Um, the only problem I have is I'm not convinced. I'm partly concerned that, so there's this myth that like, oh, once you write with a pen, you can never let anybody else write with it because the nib conforms to your hand. That's not true, except... It could be for a vintage pen. If this was a very, very well used vintage pen, it could have conformed to somebody's hand and almost certainly somebody who's right handed. So I don't know if that's working against me. Um, there is a slight crack somewhere here, which is a bummer. It stops at the band. Um, what's his ever sharp right there? Did I ever notice that? Probably never looked at it with my glasses on. Um, I recently-ish replaced the sack in it. Um, and I feel like if I'm going to keep this, I need to use it more. So I may. And what I was thinking is that I think it was Miss Marilyn Darling, maybe, who suggested that I might like some of those more um, light it, uh, chromo shading inks in like a flex pen. So I'm thinking, ooh, maybe I'll try it in here and see how that goes. And what I will do for something like that is I will fill and then use it for a day or maybe two and then empty it because I will baby it a little. Though, I mean, 
the, the biggest risk is to the sack, and I can replace that. I have at least one replacement already. Uh, here is my Laban skeleton. I clean, you know, I cleaned the cap, but look, it's still dirty. This is, uh, oh, rainbow, perhaps, obviously. You know what's neat about this converter is it has, like, a stop so that you can't um, overdraw up or over push down ink. Oh, yeah, there. I don't want to force it. Man, I tried drying this so thoroughly. I left these pins out for days. What can you do? Um, this pin has a fine nib. Which is unfortunate. For me. It's a beautiful pen. Then we have my little Lamy collection. So these were a couple of the first pins I bought. My Lamy Vista. I actually would really like to get the black converter. So I might buy one because my other converter is all stained anyway. Actually this one looks like there's still green in there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to set this aside to clean better. Maria. Look, I cleaned t over 20 pins in a day. It's not going to be perfect. Then I have my, oh, and that, um, I have like five Lamy nibs or something, four probably. This has a medium black nib on it. It came probably with fine because when I first started using fountain pens, like Reddit was like, you need fine and extra fine and blah, blah, blah. And I stupidly listened to them. Um, this is my Lamy Safari and Petrol. I bought this in a W.H. Smith in England. The barrel has cracked in two places, which is irritating. And I do not, I am not rough with my pins. I do not like <laughs> tighten them on there. So I already super glued this side and you can see it doesn't look fantastic. But I don't care, it still works. And the converter is downstairs because that is super, like, there is, like, ink behind the, the thing. And I don't know what I'm going to do about that. And uh, this has a left-handed nib on it. I really love the left-handed nib. I am left-handed. I mean, I hope that's obvious. Uh, this is my Lamy uh, All-Star in brilliant pink. Look at I can see pink in there, too. That might just be stained. I did have pink ink in here. In fact, I had Lamy Vibrant Pink in it. Um, this has a broad nib. It's my only Lamy broad nib. I actually kind of got this pen because I was like, I need a Lamy broad nib and the pins are not that much more than the nibs. And I don't have an all-star. Then this, is a Lamy 2000. <sighs> so beautiful. So Bauhaus. Such a pleasing cap. Look at that. Oh, you're so minimalist and understated. And I feel like an adult and a professional. Um, this is a medium nib. I love this pen. My only complaint with this pen is it holds uh, a lot of ink. And I like to change my inks. So when pen holds a lot, I don't get to change it. But I just fill it less full. But listen. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's, let's do that again. Oh, yeah, that's good. Although half of the joy is in the feel of that capping. Mm. Now we have some Asian pens. I mean, I guess we had the Le Bon up there. We have a Platinum. What's this say on it? This is platinum. Look, it's the 3776 Nice Pure. So this one is ridged on the outside. And I have a medium nib. If I had it all to do over again, would I get it in broad? Yes, especially because um, Japanese nibs run really fine. Um, and I would rather... Um, that didn't work. 
I'd rather have a broader one. So medium is touch too medium. Then this is one of my newest acquisitions. This is a Platinum Placier in Black Mist. I have not used this yet. You can see this has the same nib as the Preppy. I got them both in, I think they're called medium, 0 0.5 or 0 0.05, whatever. Because that is the size um, G2 I like. This also caps nicely. Because of their patented slip and seal cap, blah, blah, blah. Um, I gotta think about what ink I'm putting in here. We'll see. Also, I kinda wanna get a converter for it, so I might do that before I ink it. Here is uh, a Moonman M2. I bought this when I started my new job, the job I'm in currently. Um, it's nice. It does sort of post, although the back end is wobbly. It's It comes with an eyedropper to like fill it up. I, I have a Goulet, I think medium on here. Um, I like this pen, but there's a couple of issues. One, obviously, it holds a lot of ink. We had the conversation about like, hey, that looks cracked. Well, we don't need to figure that right now. There might actually just be fuzz in there. <laughs> uh, we'll have to look at it. You can do this. That's how you fill it. And then this part will just screw out if you're like not making a camera thing. And Anyway, and when your hand gets warm, it can cause the ink to want to blurp, you know, spit. So if you have hot hands, this style of pen may not be for you. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's a right-handed pen. <clears throat> just kidding. And then this friendo right here is a Jinhao X750 in the Shimmering Sands finish. Um, I replaced the nib <laughs> with a broad nib. Um which was way better. The ink I was using did not like the finer nib and I put this broad nib on. Or also that, the nib that came on it was way too dry. It did not want to write. It kept hard starting. I put the broad nib and it cured everything. So that's these. Halfway there. Halfway there. How long we've we been filming? Two hours? Great, great, great. Not two hours, don't worry. Here we are. Boop, 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 boop. Um, we have... My one and only Sailor is a Pro Gear, the full size, whatever, not the King of Pen or whatever the biggest one is called, not the slip. And the Northern Lights color. This was a Goulet thing. I think you could still get it. Wait, are you inked? It's inked. Maybe I knew that. Oh, yeah. This is with Sailor Yamadori Shikiori. Shikiori Yamadori. I love this. This is my, my most likely to succeed pen. Um, anyway, in the Northern Lights color. Did I say that? I like this pen. It's got a broad nib. It writes well. Nope. Save you. Then we have my other, like, German collection. See, this is where Lamy could go if Lamy could go here. But I didn't want to put all of these pins on this side. I might do that. It's fine. I need to get over it. Here. Pelican M205 in Moonstone. I have found that pictures kind of don't do this justice. It has a sort of rainbow holographic gritter. And... Um, I don't find the nib particularly bouncy. Manda describes hers as bouncy. I'm wondering if it's just, like, look how far up that feed goes. It would bounce more if the feed was further in. So I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it. It writes fine. It writes well. That is a medium nib because everybody's like, oh, Pelican writes so broad. Okay, I'll get a medium. That's a lie. That's a medium. I'm gonna, I, could, I could rant for a while about that. 
This is my Pelican M605 in the black tortoise shell. I got that this year. Hey, what are you? This has a thing on it. Hmm, I wonder if it's scratched. Well, that'll happen. Um, this has a medium nib. I like this pen. This also makes me feel like a real life adult who does important things. Instead of just like writing, why are things so difficult? I hate the rain. Um, <laughs> this is my Veco Perkeo in clear. I bought this pen because it has a clear feed and I thought that was dope. That's the story. It writes way better than it has any reason to. I replaced the nib. I think this, yeah, this is a Goulet medium It because it only came with fine, if I recall. That's not happening. Um, I, by the way, I have a stash of fine nibs that I'm probably never using, so maybe I should sell them. This is a Coveco Sport in Frosted Coconut. I have one that's like the pink ice, so it's like clear here and pink here, but that's an extra fine nib. <clears throat> and um, so I never use it, and I wanted one I would use. This has a broad nib, and I love this plungy converter. I know a lot of people don't. Please don't let them start. There are these people that come here and they're like, honk, 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 honk. And one day somebody went out and was like, could you stop? I was like, thank you. You're the hero we need. Um, anyway, I like the plungy converter. It helps with cleaning. Here is another really recent acquisition. This is a Faber-Castell Hexo in silver. Hey, it says it's made in Slovenia. That's cool. Um, I read that this is the same size nib as a Twisby Eco. So that's interesting. This is broad. And it came with a cartridge. And, no. So, oh, no, this is a Quebeco cartridge. It came with, who knows what, maybe nothing. Oh, it came with filled cartridges. Yeah. Maria, keep it together. I'm excited for this one. I tend to like German pins, it turns out. Maybe I just, I tend to like non-Japanese pins. Is that true? No, I do really like German pins. Okay, wow. Okay, let's stay on track. Then we have the beginning of the Twisbees. I have three Twisby Go. There's a part of me that wants them to release more in more colors. There's a part of me that's glad that they haven't. So this is Smoke Sapphire Clear. The nibs are broad, broad, and medium. I originally got blue with medium, but then I thought, no, blue broad. So I switched it. So the, the clear has my medium now. Um, these are great pens for shimmer. That is why I bought them. So that I can put shimmer inks in them and they clean out pretty easily. You can't disassemble them the, um, as fully as other Twisbees as far as I know. But I haven't needed to because that plunger action is like, get out! Get out of here! To all the shimmer and it works well. And then I was like, oh, I guess I should own basically one of every kind of Twisby. I don't know. I think that was my logic. So this is a Twisby Mini. Okay, look, I don't remember the full name of it. It's like a Twisby Diamond 580 AL Mini in mint. And I like, I can use this without posting it. So if you have smaller hands than I do, that might be difficult for you. But look at how far back that comes. I mean, if you have bigger hands than I do, if you have smaller hands than I do, definitely it should be okay. Um, but I also like that it does post. It screws on. Um, mine has been kind of like stiff, but then it was okay. So I don't know what the deal is. I like this pen a lot and I like that it holds a lot of ink, but not too much ink. So again, that's going to be like the biggest downfall for all of the Twisbees that I have, in my opinion, is that since I like to change my inks really frequently, I don't want as big of an ink capacity. So again problem with these two uh, piston fillers so I just 
we'll just not fill them as full. Now, we come to the end. Cover that up again. And uh, isn't this beautiful? A part of me thinks that clearly what I need are two more ecos and then these have to go somewhere else, right? Because we've got all these ecos. I also don't like that this pink doesn't fit any real, anywhere in here really well. Like, look, this, this, I don't like that. Well, actually, that's kind of okay. I don't like it next to that, but anyway. So, we have... A Twisby Back 700R in Iris. I adore this pen. I have a broad nib on it. This pen just writes with whatever ink I put in it. It doesn't complain. Love it. Then we have a Twisby, Di Twisby Diamond 580 in um, Iris. Look what happened. Something went weird when I was filling it. And the piston, like, I took it apart and tried to fix this and then it didn't work and then I've since realized who cares that just limits the filling capacity which is kind of what I want anyway aesthetically I don't like that the piston only goes to here like that's as far back as it goes but I'm over it then we have <clears throat> all the Twisbees ever that's not true I don't have nearly the collection I could so this is a really new one. This is the Eco in Pink. I have an extra fine nib on it because that's all that was available. I have it inked up with Ackerman Poultry Pink. This is a Eco in Clear. I have a 1.1 stub. And the Eco T in Mint, which I'm about to clean out. This has Colorverse Mystic Mountain. And um, we have... Oh, I don't know, this might be my favorite. This is the Cerulean Blue. I have it inked with Tsukiyo. And this um, has a, oh, this has a broad nib. This has a medium nib because I swapped it. So this came with a broad, but it has medium now. This is transparent purple, or blue, has a broad nib. Lilac. Has a broad nib. Glow purple has a broad nib. And transparent purple has a broad nib. So the pen that I'm missing from this collection is a black. I think I'm going to get the black eco. So that I can put like shiny black in it. Or strigoi. Although I think strigoi should go into my go. Because if it like absolutely ruins the pen, I would, that was cheaper to replace. So anyway, that's my pen collection. It feels like a lot of pens to me, and it is. But I also know that, like, a bunch of people have more than I do. But it's still a lot. And so my goal is to be a little more mindful. And ideally, I would, like, not add any pens without removing some. So there's a, there's a few in here that I know that... I could be convinced to let go and may do so if I want a different pen. Um, but it's hard because most of them I would not replace. So here's all my currently inked right now, but that's going to change. Because what I do with some of these 30 inks pens, it's not these is I'll just use them for another day or two and then unink them. Now I gotta go wash my hands, wash my empty tea, mug of tea, and uh, I don't know, do something with my life today, maybe, maybe, maybe not. So, did you have a favorite? Uh, how do you store your collection? 
Would a, can, a would a, a thing like this work for you, or would you rather have them in like one of those trays? Uh, I'm curious. Uh, let me know. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope whenever you're watching this, you're having a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Bye.